All right, folks. It is time. We have the Archipelago Multiworld Harder Difficulty with Hop Up, Mava, Lovent, and Toaster Party. All right. Hello, everyone. This is the Archipelago Multi World game. Now, before we begin, real quickly, I would just like to explain, real quick, the general gist of what this is for everyone. So, you may have may not have heard of a randomizer for video games before. What that basically means, and to give a good example, say a Zelda game, you open a chest, it could have bombs, it could have an ocarina. Could have hookshot, could have five rupees, you don't know what it is. Just all the items in the games get swapped around. You don't know how it's going to work. And that's that basic gist. Now what Archipelago does is let you do that sort of process between different games. So as going back to the Zelda example, you could open that chest. You could still get bombs, rupees, that stuff. Or you could get... Eight diamonds for eight diamonds for Minecraft or Mantis Claw for Hollow Knight or stars for SM64. Now, in this game in particular, I'm we're going to be playing Rogue Legacy, Overcooked 2, and Starcraft 2. And joining me in comms is Borden. Hey, hello, hello. Uh, and personally, I'm looking forward to uh, StarCraft unlocking some plates or something similar to that. Maybe coal? That would be pretty exciting. <laughs> yeah, we will see what's going on. But uh, we do probably a bit more to talk about. But before we do, I think we can just start get the run going. So I believe could start the t uh, could start the countdown. If everyone's ready to go. We go, we go in five, four, three, two, one, and we're off. Uh, so, Borden, if you if you like to talk about how StarCraft 2 and Overcooked 2 work, because I personally have no experience with either game. Um, so, Overcooked 2 is... Um going to be a little bit similar to the standard game. The big differences here are that um, the world map unlocks the different areas, the, the level ones for each area. And just going through right now, he is going to be checking out um, what we've got and what's available. For StarCraft, um, because there are 29 missions and it would take a very long time to get through the entire campaign, uh, Matt is going to be doing what's called a mini grid run. Um, so you can see uh, on his screen right now, there is the, um, the grid there. He's going to start in the upper left, and he's going to play through missions until he gets to the bottom right. That's his goal. Um, so currently, he is going to be starting the great train. Um, what's it called? Uh, the great train robbery. Sorry. Right. And so this is not like vanilla, right? Or is it actually the game? I don't know where my brain's going with this. I'm just going to move on. Rogue Legacy uh, plays a lot the same as the base game in the sense that you're kind. You kind of just have to explore the explore the manor very very roughly. Go in, probably die a couple times, come back in the randomized floors. Just have to go and find checks. Whereas with the other two games, it's more of a... more of a, There's more of a sort of order in the fact that there are levels. And that's how that's working. Um, already we've got some pretty spicy items picking up. Uh, Mav found the architect for Rogue Legacy, which is a big deal. Mm. Um, yeah, especially for the end. The architect is going to be... Basically what the architect does is it locks what the castle is going to look like. Because normally every time you die, the castle gets completely regenerated, so you don't know what the next room's going to be. 
the architect just allows you to just know because it's going to be it's going to stay that way which is good for the end because it means that if he dies it's not a big deal you can just go back to where he was going and that'll be fine it is also one of the necessary items for the setup for our uh, incentive which is the boss rush with vertigo in it yeah uh, so we are set up for that when we get there eventually yeah, to talk about the setting real briefly, what the incentive is. There's a lot of sort of more nuanced things, stuff that you can't immediately see. Uh, for Rogue Legacy, that is mainly just how many chests have items in each sort of zone, how expensive the architect is, and where things will be. And what are they for StarCraft 2 and Overcooked 2? Um, I'm sorry, I got distracted. What was the question? The the changes that are made with the incentive. Oh, um, for StarCraft 2, he is starting with um, uh, Ravens as his primary um, unit, and he is playing on Brutal Mode. Or Difficulty, mm -hmm. rather. Um, Sounds difficult. I what is... actually don't recall what our incentive was for Overcooked. You don't remember uh, Overcooked so too. Overcooked, when it is increased in difficulty, the required scores to get one, two, and three stars are scaled down from the current world record for that right. category based on the player count. The, the threshold for scores is going to be higher for them then it would be standard. Stands to reason. Uh, so that is the sort of overarching, the main one, quote-unquote, although, in my opinion, it's very nuanced. You're not really going to see it directly. However, the, the exciting one I'm looking forward to is Vertigo Boss Rush, which... Which basically, it's just going to make the fights harder. I, I don't think I... I think you'll see how it makes the fights substantially difficult. I'm actually going to hold off on that information until it comes. But right now, we're just going to watch them play their games. Pop-Pop currently going through the castle. Has a fun little trait on their character. The one making their game look very silly. Those retro purple and blue colors. Never mind. I guess <laughs> I guess it's die time. <laughs> Mav here is continuing to clean up trains. He's gonna uh, as as this progresses, the trains get progressively more uh, units around them, so that they're more heavily defended. Um, not probably going to be an issue too, an issue too much for Mav, uh, but as this goes, the trains get boosters so that they start going very quickly. So he will have to chase the trains down as they are betting. Hop up just now, getting dragons from their manor, which is a very, a very fun class of character. With Rogue Legacy, there are different classes of characters, and I believe Hop up starts with Knight by default, which he can change, but he does just starts with the knight, which is just a good overall class. Dragons just let you fly around. You might see that the next time Hop-Up dies. But yeah, that's going to be very good, particularly for exploring, which is good at the start because he needs to find stuff, get checks sent around. Um... For, for those of you who are familiar with Overcooked 2, you may notice that these levels are a little bit shorter than you anticipate. Um, for the sake of the randomizer, each level is reduced in time by about 30%. So the levels go a little bit quicker. Um, in addition to that kind of hard mode, that means that uh, there's not a ton of time to get your money in to get those three stars. Um, but that is also um, kind of what Oh, it looks like they are going to have to restart there. The um, the fire extinguisher is an unlockable item. So at the moment, they do Ooh. not have 
that. So if a fire starts in the kitchen, particularly early on in the level like that, uh, there's not a lot they can do without that unlocked. So they have to restart at this point in the game. I mean, it doesn't sound like good general business to not have a fire extinguisher. Not great policy so, for a restaurant, for sure. No. <laughs> Imagine. But I'm sure Toaster will find a way, at least for now, while we're waiting for that. Um, as far as Overcooked goes, uh, you'll notice him uh, wandering the, the Overland map a little bit, uh, trying to check into what levels he has access to and that sort of stuff. Um, what he's making decisions on is he wants to make sure that he is going into levels that he can three-star right away. Um, if there's a level that's doable but can't be three-starred, um, that's not going to be ideal because they will likely have to revisit that and that's going to waste a bunch of time. So they're going to be looking for what can they get done 100%. Mm -hmm. Oh, I do not know how Hop Hop didn't die there. Hop Hop's still trying to find his way around, more or less. Um, if you're curious about how the items work in the various games, they are all kind of tagged to different things based on how the game plays. So in Overcooked, for example, every star is a check, so that will unlock an item uh, for one of the games when they get to that star point. Yeah. Each game uh, a different item. For Rogue Legacy's case, there are quite a few things that are to be looked out for. Obviously, chests will give items, and the manner where in vanilla you upgrade your character, those are also checks again locked but there's also a few rooms there's a painting room a jukebox there's a couple npcs to look out for diaries as we may see the rogue legacy has substantially more checks than the other two games and that can affect the balance of things a little bit we will uh, have to see other plays yeah. And for StarCraft, um, there is a, a check at the end of each level for successfully completing the map. And uh, each of the secondary objectives in the level also counts as a check for um, the Great Train Robbery, for example, the, um, the map we're currently in. That is going to be their number of um, Zerg remains on the level that he had to pick up. I believe he has gathered those at this point. But you can see uh, Mav setting up for some of these trains, uh, building up quite a ball of death. Um, so when those trains start to speed up, it's not going to be too much of an issue. Yep, yep, yep. As I aforementioned, Hop Hop now has the dragons. No longer, no longer tied to gravity. Still dying very quickly. It's kind of alarming, actually, given the... Uh, the need to go get checks. However, they manage. And they do luckily find a diary, which is nice. Give them a pair of runes. Uh, Toaster Party is not playing alone. Uh, is playing with a partner. I don't know that we've got a name for Toaster's par partner, but this is a two-player version of Overcooked. I'm going to keep it real. I did not know this. <laughs> <laughs> I was not informed of this. I suppose it doesn't really matter much for the logistics of the game, but... Um, Overcooked yeah, 2 is a game that can be played single player. It is quite difficult to do so. Um, the next game in the run, actually, in, in the marathon, actually, is um, Overcooked 2, the speedrun version. Which is so, very silly, in my opinion. <laughs> it is kind that of amusing. It's, yeah. Makes you wonder um, how much we want to talk about to avoid redundancy in the next run. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs> um, as as a comment uh, towards Overcooked, um, in the speed run itself, you're going to see a lot of dashing and throwing and that sort of stuff. Um, some of those things are available to them now, but uh, the way Overcooked works, those things are split. So there is a progressive upgrade for dashing and for throwing. 
So when you first get it, you can dash sometimes, but it has a long cooldown. And you can throw things, but you can't do a quick catch. Those are second unlocks that you have to then also pick up. I suppose while we're waiting for sort of more things to come up, since still it's again just kind of going through the motions currently, so as we could talk about what sort of items where each of the players are looking for overall, that will greatly help them towards their goals. Yeah, definitely. You'd like to talk about that. Um, so what Mav is going to be looking for primarily is anti-air. Um, so when it comes to StarCraft games, uh, if you can shoot something in the air, that's pretty dang good. Um, if you can't do that, if all of your your various units can only shoot the ground stuff, that makes it very difficult to do some of that. So yeah, that's just... the big thing. It's worth noting, Maeve, Maeve talking in the uh, text client for the game, which this has a text client. I believe you can see it in the top right corner. Uh, Maeve's not picky currently. They're, they want any unit currently. <laughs> I suppose there's a little bit of a struggle going on. Uh, yes, because uh, we got the hard incentive, uh, Ravens are currently <laughs> the only basic unlocked unit for Maeve, I believe. So I was able to dig up a little bit of intel on Toaster Party's mysterious partner. Uh, it is Starry Teapot, which is his wife. Aw, I love that. Why would so I not? There is, there is some extra collaboration left over from the It Takes Two folks happening. Yes. I love the sound of that. <laughs> Ida, items that Rogue Legacy is looking for. Is mostly along the lines of the the main NPCs at the front when you die. Would be the blacksmith and the enchantress. The blacksmith gives you the ability to get armor, which will make you generally significantly stronger than you are base. That was a cool spell hop up. I agree, and the enchantress gives you generally good movement which is good for both exploration and also some fairy chests sort of ask you to have specific stuff and I think only because we got the hard incentives fairy chests are in logic and they will have checks not a, not a lot I don't believe because fairy chests if you've played the game are kind of bull but <laughs> we will figure it out as it goes along and as for overcooked items? Um, overcooked actually looks for a number of items. The biggest one early on in the game is the button. <laughs> there is a button that allows you to uh, activate ramps, which locks access to three of the six areas. So that is going to be a big find. Say it's called the button? It is the ramp button, I believe. Is what it's ah, called. okay. So it's a cute little button. Um, oh! Hop Hop just found... Okay, a couple things just happened. One, Hop Hop just found the carnival, which is one of those rare checks that needs to look out for. In this case, he needs to break... I believe it's 90 of the 100 targets here. And if he does that, there will be a check sent out. And this might be the only chance for like a very long while, so hopefully it's good. I think he got it. Yeah, by a lot. <laughs> And it was just armor up for him, not that important. He's also received progressive barbarians. Barbarian being probably a lot of people's favorite class in the game, just because it's very tanky, lets you just kind of base tank things in Rogue Legacy, which is often convenient. <laughs> we'll probably see more of that later. Mav currently appears to be uh, playing the Great Train Robbery again. Uh, and he just got Siege Tanks, so we will see if that helps him out any. Is Starry Teapot an anagram of Toaster Party? 
It is. That's crazy. <laughs> um, but going That's back awesome. to um, some of the items that Overcooked is looking <laughs> for, um, there is, so their goal is to finish 6-6, six, six, the level 6-6, six, six, and in order to unlock that level, they have to have 50 stars. So number one, they're just collecting stars. So that's going to be an important part of what they're doing. Uh, the other things they're looking for are if any of those 6-6 six, six levels require a specific unlock, that's what they're going to be looking for. So there are options like uh, you need coal. Uh, coal will unlock levels from the Unite of the Hangar Cord DLC. Uh, wood will unlock campfire token, which is needed for a number of levels, and uh, bellows also can unlock some of those levels. So it's going to depend on what levels have been shuffled into that um, area six. Pop, pop dying again. Finally being able to use that barbarian. So I'm sure there's going to be a lot more... <laughs> a lot more surviving and a lot more face tanking going on in Pop Pop's gameplay. Which I'm glad, I'm glad for him. is continuing to build up the manor. Worth noting that gold in uh, this format is substantially easier to get than it is in vanilla. Because in vanilla, you have to open chests and they'll give you a little bit of gold. But in Archipelago, gold is an item that you can just receive. And it's a substantial amount. I think the smallest is a 1,000. Which is quite nice, and why the manor is getting completed so quickly at this current moment. Yeah, the way the game originally plays, it can take a long time to build up a manor. Mm-hmm. So those extra drops make it, make it a lot quicker to get through the various unlocks. Oh, as we say that, 5,000 gold. It's, signif it's very difficult to get 5,000 gold in the base game. So to just have that as an item makes everything move substantially quicker. And I kind of like that about Archipelago. They have a lot to make things rather quick in comparison to vanilla gameplay. But yeah, Hop Hop still just moving around the castle. I, was, I tried to look at their health, but they actually have one of the defects that prevents us from seeing it. So, who knows when Hop Up's going to die next. I suppose while there's downtime, we'll talk a little bit about Archipelago. I'll talk a little bit more in depth about Archipelago, what it is. So, yeah, obviously, as I said, it is a randomizer of sorts, multi-world, meaning that more than one world is involved in the game. Obviously here there's three of them. The origins of this are actually kind of silly, as I've learned uh, throughout playing in my life. Is that it, this used to start out as just a multi-world for A Link to the Past, uh, the Legend of Zelda game, and they would play that often, but one of the, I don't remember, is it April 1st, 2020 or 2019? Uh, the main dev for it, Berserker, said, I'm going to add Factorio to this randomizer as a joke. Since then, they have added, I believe, over, I believe 31 games to Archipelago, and it is growing. There is a big pool many developers coming together to add games to this wonderful software <laughs> that I enjoy a lot. Yeah, and so Archipelago is a network framework. So it, it runs how the games communicate with each other, but if you're interested in a specific game, then you develop for that game, hey, how is this game going to communicate with the server? And once you have that, Archipelago handles the rest. It handles the item sorting and the hand handles the item communication and all that sort of stuff so really people who are interested in a game can be like hey let's start this development and don't have to go with the, the whole background and framework stuff that's already done yep so 
Very cool the, system. The game potential only bound by possibility and legality. So many, so many, so many possibilities if this game got more traction, got more developers in. I'm just looking forward to the future of it. Oh, is Hop Up? Okay, Hop Up's going to go into the Maya. Most of the game so far, Hop Up's been hanging out in the main first area. Oh my god. <laughs> Never mind that. The to Toaster just found the ramp button. Hey! You did just talk about that. <laughs> and also, Maeve... Is Marauder... Marauder's... Is Marauder a unit? Marauder is a unit. It is a, a heavy infantry unit that does pretty well against armored targets. So, be pretty happy to find that, I suspect. Given that they were desperate at one point, Given that they really wanted one at one point, any unit seems like uh, a good situation to be in. They also unlocked bunkers a little while back, so between bunkers and marauders, that's a pretty decent defensive setup as well. Very solid stuff. Moment hop up, trying to figure it out. Where 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 his gold is spent the best right now. As again, they don't have blacksmith or enchantress. So gold kinda only can go into the mana right now, which is still good because you know, a lot of good stuff there. A couple of triple stat increases come through. And I see Hop Hop has used their first hint, which will require me to explain hints real quick. So Archipelago has has a sort of system in place to mainly to combat sort of very long situations where people spend a lot of time stuck in their games. And the counter is basically every time you collect some sort of item for either your world or someone else's world, you get what is called a hint point. If you collect enough of those hint points, you can spend them on hints, which will tell you... You hint for an item, the game will tell you where that item is in the multi-world. So in this case, Hop Hop wanted to find Blacksmith, because Blacksmith is a very good item. <laughs> and it is at 1-6 completed in Toaster Party's world. Which, I don't know anything about... How that, that is? Is that reasonable? That's actually, I, I think, a little bit unfortunate. Mm. So, so the way that the star requirements go is they they work out you know, into a spiral. So the the lesser required stars are in the the blank dash one or the x dash one levels. As you get further on, the star requirements get higher. So one six is going to be the sixth highest star requirement, I believe, to open that level. Which is going to be late game. Oh, yeah, that's unfortunate. It basically just means that Hop Hop's going to be relatively weak for a while. And Hop Hop just put the just put a sad face in the text client with them. <laughs> oh, no. It's fortunate. At least the scaling in Archipelago Rogue Legacy is still, again... Significantly faster than vanilla. You may notice they're already level 59. That's uh, because attack ups, health ups, all those stat upgrades are in the pool and he's been receiving them. Um, we, did, we did just see uh, Toaster take a check into 1-4, which is his uh, most currently available version of the ones. Um, it looks like he does not have what he's looking for to make progress on that just yet. Good. Yeah, that blacksmith's gonna be a while. Toaster Party has given their input. Just needs stars for 1415, they think. So, still annoying, but maybe not as annoying, I suppose. Is it still saying only for that? Matt, ugh, hop up finding all of the rand all of the random rare rooms 
they did find a jukebox, which I forgot to mention earlier, but they just found the uh, the gambling lady or the gambling elf who in the vanilla game, there's a one in three chance you either, I think, triple your gold or get nothing. I don't remember the actual, which is, it's been a while. Yeah, one in three chance to double your gold, otherwise you get nothing. Yeah, okay. In this, fortunately, Archipelago makes it, they decided that it's not a skill game, so you just, you just get the item, even if, even if you fail the game, you'll still get the check for it. So we, I'm pretty sure Hop-Hop failed that time, they don't need to go there again. That's that's been said. And so in terms of the the rare checks, Hop Hop's on good pace. About on uh more common checks, I'm not sure. Is there only on Castle Chest ten? Sure, it'll be fine. <laughs> Nothing could possibly go wrong. Maeve has also just hinted. They have a Viking at Castle Hampton Chest 26. What is Viking? <laughs> a Viking is a, a primarily air support unit, but it has, has the ability to uh, transition into a ground unit that also shoots ground. So it's very good anti-air. So Chest 26 is a little bit deep relative to where we're at right now. Um, how about just gather it's, 11? Yeah. It's just it's purely a matter of time when that comes in. There's nothing really blocking them. It's just finding 26 chests can take a while. Right. So uh, Hop Hop just has to get a move on, basically. <laughs> no pressure. But, but that, uh, that Viking is going to be very useful as far as that anti-air I was talking about a little earlier. Right. Have them still just exploring. Hop up again in the uh, the one state where the game's all retro and weird. This is a fun room. There's a lot of a lot of different rooms in Rogue Legacy. I don't. Rem I think I've seen that one before. Not popping though. That's a silly little room. Making more progress. Um, Mav has just started the Mobius Factor. Which is a level so you're going to have Kerrigan down on the, the bottom of the screen. Kind of going in and trying to access these data cores. And the goal is to blow them up before she can get to them. Uh, while simultaneously flying around and rescuing a whole bunch of units. Don't. <laughs> thank you. Th thank you for the kind words, Hop Up. I'm not. I'm not gonna read what was just said, but I believe the text client should. The text client on your screen, you'll be able to see what was said yourself. I will read the other thing. Donate to charity. Uh, very true. I've, uh, these dogs need to be named. <laughs> uh, you may notice that a couple of Kevins have hit the, uh, the feed. Uh, Kevins are an overcooked item. Each one unlocks one of the Kevin levels, of which there are eight. And those especially are especially fitting for this. Kevin yes. the dog. Mm -hmm. so, so it was meant to be. I have a. It Wait. certainly was. I have a a question for you, commentators. How did you come to be so knowledgeable about the uh, individual archipelago runs? So well, well, I'm glad that we come off as our knowledgeable. Yeah, <laughs> um, I'm glad about because personally, I only know one of the games here somewhat well. <laughs> but I guess we could talk about actually Borden you start yeah so um, 
I am a long time player of StarCraft off and on. I'm not good at the game, but I enjoy it very much. Um, so that was pretty exciting to see that that was accessible in Archipelago. Uh, Rogue Legacy is a game that I had as well and just tried out that. Um, it adds some interesting flavor to the game. I really enjoy it. Uh, I have no experience with Overcooked 2. Um, I have played it for approximately 15 minutes, uh, but I was playing it by myself, mm -hmm. which is a lot less fun. <laughs> so, you so most of, well enough, uh, yeah, but most of most of this comes from reports from Toaster Party and uh, just general research, not experience. Yeah, research does go a long way. Me personally. I found Archipelago through none of these games. I found it through the game Hollow Knight, which now you know, that's another game in Archipelago, Hollow Knight. Add that one to the books. Uh, that was like a little under a year ago. And then at some point during it, I saw that a game called Rogue Legacy was in the list, and I was like, this seems fun, let me try it. And that's that. That's a... Because of that, I'm now knowledgeable of this game. I've played it a little bit. I've not played it as much anymore, but I'm still, I think, well enough understanding to be able to provide my support here. <laughs> gotcha. Very cool. Uh, oh, the initial uh, game always... that brought me to Archipelago is uh, Time Spinner, which is uh, a Metroidvania kind of a game. Oh, you got into that's actually awesome. I found Time Spinner from Archipelago. Another good game in Archipelago. <laughs> yeah, really solid. Uh, but then I got my family involved. And um, so we, we off and on do uh, kind of weekend Archipelago runs where we all roll up a seat and just play when we're able and check in with each other and all that sort of stuff. That's so awesome. I, I love to hear that. Oh, that's a really good question in chat. Um, chat says, are there any games you are hoping to get Arch Archipelago support? Um, so many. There are a lot of games. <laughs> There's quite a few games in development as well. And so it's tricky. I'd say the one game I'm probably looking most forward to added is Ori in the Blind Forest. Yes, and Ori in the Blind Forest it does have a developer that is currently working on it. I don't know how far they are in that process. Um, I've checked in every once in a while and it seemed like they were testing logic and that sort of stuff. But um, yeah, there are a lot of games that are in the works and Ori 1 is very much one of them. Yeah, I think Metroidvanias work very well in uh, this format. Yeah, definitely. I think... I also think in the next update, it's kind of news. I think Terraria and Wargroove might be added soon. It did seem in like the... they were getting close. Although, is Terraria that far along? Well, okay. Well, Wargroove and actually also Link's Awakening have had proper beta tests ran, and so they're probably on their way. Terraria, I saw was. Uh, ER'd in the GitHub. Okay. At the very least. So, they might not be that close, but it, it's good. I think it's coming. Eventually. The solid list. I'd love that room pop-up. Just found the... <laughs> all those pots. Oh no, he's gonna die soon, I think. Oh! No, that was a good spell use. Gotta gotta give. Haven't been giving Hop Hop credit where it was due in a while. I don't need to do that. Never mind. Uh, anything going on in the? Other game? What's going on in StarCraft 2 right now? Uh oh. Wait. Hang on.
bit of technical difficulties rearing in. Hang on, this this has messed up all of my layout plans. <laughs> Uh, what's going on? So I stop streaming and start again. Hang on. This is an interesting environment. So Hop Up's Discord crashed. <laughs> <laughs> Seem to be back in. It's a bit of a funky scenario. Especially given that during the uh, during the setup for this, it was mostly Toaster's stream that was having the malfunctions. So it's kind of interesting that I believe that's the one that's running right now. Although, yeah. Yeah, but Hop Hop's Discord crashed, which made me lose the screen <laughs> it, says, it says connecting constantly yeah all on bs it says connecting and it stopped failed to connect okay uh this might be problematic uh i don't want to uh, Let's see this. Uh, yes. It's finding. just one of the things that happens here with online runs, folks. You can practice and rehearse and get things set up tech-wise as much as you want. But the moment you pull a runner in, it's just bound to happen. Sometimes appreciate everybody's patience. Sometimes life says no to perfectly functioning streams. <laughs> and general computer stuff. Hop up keeps finding the gambling is, health. I don't know is how it's now. It should be fine. Thank you. Okay. All right. I'm still moving right along. No time to stop for pop up or toaster. Still got checks to collect. So it looks like Please. Mav is building into a secondary here. Has not yet taken down the group list, which is the um, bonus objective for the current level for him but setting up a pretty decent defensive system over there. Mm -hmm. Going to need to check again. Which chest was the Viking in? I believe uh, it was... was in chest 26. 26, okay. Do you actually knock a single chest in that? Oh, no. <laughs> hop up, hop up, working on it. <laughs> I like how I can tell when hop up's ty typing in the text client. Oh, is it receiving the check that killed you? Oh, I don't like the sound of that. <laughs> yeah, because I, I don't know. I assume it was well seen, but when hop up receives an item, big pop-up appears on his screen 
saying that they got the pop up. Presumably, that messed up Hop Pop's uh, plan for dodging whatever attack just happened. Did you say attack. that Hop Pop's pop up popped off? Yes, I would say that. Well, it popped off in the worst way possible. I would say. Not, it's not a good pop off, but you know, pop up to pop off. Getting a couple, a couple runes, I believe. There's balance rune. I've only kept track of what some of the runes do. I believe balance is not exciting. But yeah, still getting bunch of items that rely on having blacksmith and enchantress i still just not having blacksmith or enchantress unfortunately <laughs> gotta work with the base setting although might not be too bad considering that they are level 100 right now on the dot i'm glad i caught it at that moment <laughs> and uh correct me if i'm wrong but i believe level is determined by the number of stats in the game is that correct yeah, it's stats based. And because of the way the items work, I believe you get I don't know if it's true for all stats, but for quite a few stats, you get a lot of levels of that per item you get. So for example, the there's one for like the gold cost down. And in vanilla you get it in ten percent increments, but in the but in AP you get 50% for the one item. <laughs> yeah, multiple upgrades. All of them are in sets of five. Thank you for informing me of the exact detail, Hop Hop. Sometimes specifics are a bit hard to know for certain. Hop Hop. Brushing, brushing the path of the Maya, I think it's clear in Hop Hop's decision tree that they need to get some get these Castle Hampson checks done ASAP. Get that hinted item and also make sure there's nothing else early in the logic to hold other people back. When we talk about logic, what exactly does that entail? I suppose that is a good point. Oh, Hop Hop just found Enchantress. That is a very good item. That's going to allow them to get much better movement. Uh, I believe also a couple of good things for just general survivability. Very good. But uh, moving back to the logic conversation. So, as I think needs to be the case in all, all randomizers, you need to be aware that sometimes... It could be possible that an item is just behind something that makes it impossible to get. Like, for example, if you need... in For like the Zelda example again, if you need Hookshot to get somewhere, and the item that's there is Hookshot, that were, suddenly you can't get Hookshot anymore. It's impossible. So the way that you counter that is with logic. Not in these games' cases. The logic is what makes sure that items are in reasonable enough, or at least possible locations, so that everything is gettable. There are different levels of logic, and I believe... I believe for Rogue Legacy and Overcooked, it's all items are gettable. And I th think it's slightly different for StarCraft. Because I looked at the uh, settings that they posted, and I think Maeve only needs the bare minimum items they need. So that's the only thing that the world guaranteed is possible to get, is the that's bare minimum. I've set Honestly, up so I don't need anything. No logic. Oh, is that how it works in StarCraft? Okay. There is logic, but I set up to, to no logic. Oh, okay. So gotcha. um, the, the standard logic settings for uh, StarCraft look for specific things for specific levels. So, for example, if a level has a lot of air units, it will look for something called an, a competent anti-air comp. 
So basically a setup that will let you deal with a bunch of air enemies. Um, and so that can be Vikings, it can be bunkers and marines. Like There are a couple ways to do that, but it checks to see if you have any of them. For the end of the game in StarCraft Logic, it looks at your defense rating. And it gives you defense rating based on some of the units. So Siege of Tanks has a value of, I think, 3. And it looks for 12 for you to be able to finish the last level. So that's how the logic works. But uh, Matt has decided, no, that's not interesting. Matt said, no, I'm, I'm going to figure it out. <laughs> Which, to be fair, Vikings did get put in a gettable spot. So it does. It doesn't guarantee that you're not going to need this type of, or you're not going to get this type of stuff. Just says they're not going to make sure that that happens. Yep. It's just so it's just purely random, basically. And um, if you are considering getting into uh, Archipelago and you're a little concerned, like, oh, what if I hold up somebody or that sort of stuff? You, in the settings when you make your game, you can set it so that some amount of your game is accessible. So there's a, a priority value. So you can basically tell the game, hey, I need everything that I need to win to be in my game, so that you won't hold people up necessarily. Or you can say, I want to be halfway through my game when somebody else is at 100% or whatever. Mm -hmm. And the, the hinting system also exists too sort of mitigate this being stuck in places because at, at the very least you can know where important items are so people can potentially be guided towards getting that yeah so there are a lot of tools when you're first getting into it that make it accessible and not um the nightmare nightmare we have currently given our players <laughs> yeah As you can see here, Hop Hop, uh, not going to go into the boss right now. Oh, are those? Uh, Goliath is pretty huge for Mav. Uh, Goliath, uh, particularly, there's a specific upgrade that we're looking for to make them go from, from good to amazing. Um, but Goliath are ground units that do really well against air units. If you get the upgrade, they can shoot air and ground units at the same time, which make them really, really good in a defensive position, or offensive, I suppose. Yeah, it seemed like two two good items back-to-back -back in that from that one room's chest. It seemed pretty good overall. That was a good game. It is worth noting, and I, I suppose this could have been brought up earlier, I actually didn't quite think about this, but there is, like, you can see the text client right there, and most of it you can kind of just make out it's just the person sent item to other person and then it names what the location name is because every place every place has to have some sort of location name in those chase in those cases castle hampson chest 21 and 22 uh something more notable perhaps is the that the item name has a color to it and that color actually is somewhat important Hop up found carnival again. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> this is ridiculous. But uh ignoring that. Uh the uh the text client items have different colors and they're sort of in, they sort of have some sort of meaning to them. The the first one is bl light blue items. Those are just generally junk filler items. They're, they can be, like, helpful, but in general, you don't really care to get them. Then you have the dark blue items, which are the useful items. Stuff that is good to get, in most cases, but it's not required to, not required to do anything. Unlike the purple items, which do serve that function. It's all the items that are required to do stuff in the game. Now, of course, Rogue Legacy, it's a bit weird, because technically you could beat the game with no attack with no attack ups, no health up, none of that, if you're good. But that would make the game really annoying to play. 
And so those stuff are also made uh, purple items. And in particular, the purple items are the important ones for the sake of the logic and making sure that things are gettable <laughs> as such. Yep, those are the progression items. Mm-hmm. There's also a fourth category that we will not see because none of the games... Either none of the games have it or they weren't turned on. I'm actually not sure. But that's trap items. Items that are actively bad for you. <laughs> Which yeah. I think is great. <laughs> Those are things that you would see more common. Uh, specifically, a comparison is the Ocarina of Time multi-world where you could receive an ice trap and suddenly become encased in ice and start taking damage, correct? Yeah, something like yeah. that. Um, so Minecraft, for example, has a bees uh, pickup, which will just spawn a number of angry bees around. Just spawn bees, and they're and they're mad. <laughs> and then Few the biggest happen. scary one, uh, Super Mario World, I think, can just make you read. The spookiest thing of all, indeed. The literature <laughs> trap. I'm I'm still holding out hope for Hollow Knight to have a similar thing. <laughs> Because it totally can. <laughs> we'll bust open a random lore entry. Yes. <laughs> With your claw in Ganon's uh, castle light trial. It's a great place for that one. Love that. Um, there is a, uh, a setting in the game that we did not turn on. Uh, just for the sake of getting through the game. And that is Deathlink. <laughs> Want to talk a little bit about Deathlink? Sure. I mean, it's a pretty simple setting to explain. Basically, if a pl if two players have Deathlink on, and one of them dies, the other person will also die as a result. And this will be the case for anyone who has Deathlink on. It's opt-in. It's not going to kill someone who doesn't consent to it. But if you do... Oh, man. <laughs> it can get bad. <laughs> Not all games have it. I think mainly because it needs to be implemented per game. We can't... Because you need to figure out what, quote-unquote, death means for some games. But... Very fun setting. While none of us have it on for this... Hop Hop did just die, which is still at the very least funny. <laughs> uh, yes, I believe that Rogue Legacy is the, the only game in our set currently that has Deathlink as an option. Um, technically, you could implement it on StarCraft, but that would be immensely frustrating. I, I could imagine for both of those games, it would be... Because the only, the only real option is to just restart the level, right? Right. That does not sound good. <laughs> uh, Hop Hop getting runed up. I think you can see Vault Runes, which allow double jump. Sprint Runes let you move faster. Getting a good build. Yeah, look at that. Now he's really going to be moving. Flexing a little bit for the camera. <laughs> Yeah. Currently, Up Up still just getting checks in, I believe, the first area. Still has that hinted item coming out, the uh, Vikings. Although, we're at 23 of 26, so it should be coming very soon. Yep. Uh, Mav has since moved into Haven's Fall. So this mission has you up against the Zerg, who are spreading into various colonies and trying to build up their forces. Your job is to go and murderate them so they can't spread. And it's a very air-focused uh, map. The, the original uh, the original campaign map introduces uh, Vikings. 
so mm -hmm. it's, it's heavily built to take advantage of those which we have not yet gotten. Still on Vikings. We are it is close. So if Hop Hop can just find a couple more chests, there's one. If he finds the boss room, that'll just be all of them. <laughs> so he'll be so that'll be sent. Finding quite a few chests, so it does look like it's going to be coming very soon. I imagine that shortly after that check is sent out, Pop Pop's gonna. I would probably probably clear out the area and then switch over to focusing on getting chests in the next area, Forest of Abkhazia, because the setting's currently set to thirty-five chests per zone. Uh, which is a lot of chests. And so Hop Up may occasionally need to switch operatives to be able to keep checks flowing at a good pace. I think Hop Up might be explicitly looking for the boss room because two good chests for free. How is Overcooked 2 looking right now? Because, uh... That they're Viking sent. Because over to Overcooked... Did they send... Oh, they did... Wait, did they send, uh... The Blacksmith yet? Hinted at 1-6. I don't believe so. I don't believe they have gotten there yet. Oh, no, they, ju they did finish. The last thing they did was 1-5. Okay, so no. <laughs> Could be getting close. I uh, do you happen to know what the star requirement is? Um, I don't. Is it random in Overcooked? It is not random. It increases uh, in a spiral, I guess. So, so um. Yeah. The, the X-1s have relatively low requirements, and the X-6s have relatively high requirements. Hop, uh, hop up standing still, I think, to <laughs> make me point out that they have the, I believe it's called the Alz. It's either Alzheimer's or Dementia. I actually can't. It's Dementia. The trait where some, some enemies appear that just aren't real. <laughs> Above question marks around them. They're really funny. You may have may have already seen a couple, but we'll probably see a couple more throughout the rest of this. It's a bit silly. <laughs> Another carnival. <laughs> I don't know how Hop Hop keeps finding these rare rooms. <laughs> Cause each of each of these rare rooms only has one one item tied to them in Archipelago. <laughs> Uh, just got from Toaster Party 1-6 is 44 stars. So, it's currently at 34. Mm. I know and they're not the fat rare maze, our... but three in an hour still feels somewhat impressive to me. I don't know. <laughs> uh, 50 is our end game goal, so... it's 50... 44 of 50? That's bad. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, if you had noticed on the previous level, that was a campfire level. They were cooking on campfires there. I like the system where they're communicating with us through the text client, which the chat can also see. Get at least one special room per generation on average. I guess I'm just bad at exploring. <laughs> Fair enough. Pop up going into forest now. As I mentioned, still 35 chests here. Got a lot of work to do still. Yeah, do you want to talk a little bit about the different zones? Yeah, sure. So the the game world legacy, as I mentioned, uh, procedurally generated uh, castle. The castle has four zones, which generally scale up in difficulty. Uh, the first is the Castle Hampson. That's the one that you start in, and that we've seen for most of the game so far. 
Then there's Forest of Kasia, which is the one that Hop Up is currently in, little foresty biome. Then there's the Maya, which is up more, which is harder than this one, and then Land of Darkness, which is below. All four of these have different enemies. The chest generally generally better in vanilla. It doesn't really matter here, because again, random. And each one has a boss to fight, which we're currently not doing because of incentive reasons. You Again, you will see when he starts fighting bosses what that is. Um, how about they just pick up walk wheels, which are helpful for a number of the Overcooked 2 levels that require um, walks. So the wheels are required to keep them moving and needed. Yeah, I, think I was, I was going to ask what they do, but I imagine, I guess, wheel the walks would be a I, I reasonable explanation. Case, yes. yes, all right. Fair enough. <laughs> Maeve, uh, tell me, tell me about what Maeve just posted. <laughs> it sounds like he's doing something silly. I don't know. I assume. Do you have the text line open? I I actually don't. Also, rip. Okay, I will read it out then. I'll try to do as much as possible with ravens for lols. Oh. Um... <laughs> So I believe, uh, yeah, if you see the horde of ravens that he is moving across the map, I think he's going to be using the auto turrets to try to take out the uh, the bases here. Just oh. because it's more interesting, I guess, oh. than using it's, other stuff. Yes, randomized children has just been sent. For when you're tired of the same old vanilla children, you can always randomize them. This is one of the this is the best check in Rogue Legacy. Not in terms of actually doing anything good, but because it's a very funny name, Randomized Children. What it actually does in the game is just basically, when you die, because the Rogue Legacy, when you die, you have a new character to select. If you don't like any of the characters you see, you can random, you can re-roll it. Get a new set of characters. Which is useful, but also very funny, in my opinion. Apologies for that. It, I just felt like I had to do that. Back to Ravens. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Mab <laughs> is going to be um, using Ravens to take out these posts. He's going to basically just fly them across the map, throw a whole bunch of auto turrets down, and then walk away, and let the turrets do their job, and then rinse and repeat. I believe as the sounds develop their energy. I'm I'm not one for playing RTSs, but that sounds unoptimal. It it, it is not optimal. No. <laughs> Fair enough. Anything else going on? Uh, this is mission three for the potential five for Mav. So. Uh, because it is a mini grid, and they're not, uh, they're, it's a three by three grid. The the fewest number of maps you can go through to win is five. So from here, he will either go into Welcome the jung Jungle, or Welcome to the Jungle, or Shatter the Sky. Uh, my guess is Welcome to the Jungle because it's a significantly more straightforward map. And mm -hmm. his last map will be Engine of Destruction. I'll pop with another funny trait here. Rogue Z has a couple of funny traits. This one's stereo blind. All the characters are 2D. Uh, why do I say... <laughs> Every time I bring up the trait, this happens. Uh, the character is 2D. Instead of properly turning around, it's based, it just looks like a paper flipping. And I find that to be very cute. So Hop-Hop gonna be looking at the stuff. Still haven't finished the manor. I 
I actually feel like that usually happens a bit fast. I guess there's not much left. And it might not even be good stuff there. I don't know. I'm not in the game. I can't really see exactly what's going on. Um, Overcooked 2 has just started a uh, horde level. So uh, I'm not super conversant on the storyline of Overcooked 2, but what I do know is there are red zombies involved. Mm. Yeah. And the horde levels, uh, I believe you have to feed the red zombies so that they go away and don't break your stuff. You, you know, you saying that just made me think. It's actually quite good that neither of us are that knowledgeable about Overcooked 2, given that that's the game that's coming up next. Oh yeah, you'll get a lot of information. <laughs> Especially <time>. story. <laughs> it it kind of actually worked out <laughs> that way. Huh. But, right. um, key to the randomizer, uh, you need a coin pouch in order to do these horde zombies. Uh, those These horde levels because you have to purchase repairs to the walls and such. And if you don't have that coin pouch, you cannot gain coins, which means you cannot repair these things. Which I... Was that not one of the... I think that was one of the first things that was sent out. It was one of the first checks we got. Yeah. yeah. Which is pretty good. It would appear. Guess while while stuff's happening, people are just getting checks. Hang on, pop, pop, pop's typing. I can tell because I can't see the screen anymore. Right? Yeah, I guess to bring that up, the the archipelago implementation is, you know, it's volunteered people done. It's not it's not perfect. I did an example. The reason the coin purse kind of mattered a little bit is because there's currently a bug with the logic for coin purse where if it's in a particularly late level which it can be because of the bug it can be in a late level that requires it making the world impossible fortunately it was extremely early in this particular role so we didn't have to worry about that so that's good Something... Sorry. So we are kind of entering the uh, mid to late game here. Uh, Pop-ups. Uh, stats are scaling a little bit. It's getting yeah, more the access crazy. to more areas. Um, Rogue Legacy in particular is a game that kind of takes off very quickly. It's very yeah. difficult in the early levels, and then once you get to a certain number of stats, it kind of just balloons. Yeah, he's currently exploring the forest, because there's checks there, but I feel like he's strong enough at this point to do the Maya, the third area, if they if they really needed to. And so, yeah, it's scaling up pretty well. And kind of in similar fashion uh, with Overcooked 2, we're seeing a lot more access to different areas. Um, and uh, I believe selection process at this point is getting much closer to what are the most efficient checks we can get rather than how do we get anywhere. Yeah. Which is good, especially at this point. Because at this point, the logic has something overall is just like, like called spheres, which is basically just like sphere one, the stuff you can access immediately. Sphere 2, stuff you can access with this specific, particularly easy to get item, and etc. etc. And for most players, once you get past the first couple spheres, for a lot for some games, just sphere one, uh, it kind of stops being about how early the check is and just starts being just just start getting checks. Just just get the ball rolling. No one's gonna be mad if you missed a "Quote unquote early item." Um, that is not always the case, however. Some, t yeah, there are exceptions. <laughs> do you want to talk about VK mode? Hmm. Yeah, we can talk about VK VK mode. So this is this is sort of lore for Archipelago. 
which unfortunately could not be really expressed naturally here because all three of these games are actually, I guess that's, is that true? Can any of these games be K? Uh, technically Overcooked 2 can. Uh, I think okay. that's the only one of our three today that can be K. And so far, I think hasn't. BK, if you haven't figured out, it means it means stuck. It means there are no longer items that I can get. I just have to wait for other people to get items for me to be able to do anything else. The reason it's called BK is because one of the very early uh, multi-randomizers that were done in this sort of community, back when it was just a link to... I'm pretty sure back when it was just a link to the past... Uh, one of the runners got BK. They decided to leave, go to the other thing you can imagine BK means, which is Burger King. Order food, eat food, come back, and they were still stuck. <laughs> and ever since then, we've we've sort we've called it BK in honor of that funny moment. Which, funnily enough, we. We tried tracking the history on it. It wasn't like a recorded thing, even. It just happened. <laughs> and people have talked about it. Interesting little bit of deep lore. <laughs> yeah, it kind of became a necessary sort of part of the conversation as um, we, the, the archipelago community regularly has what we call asyncs, which are asynchronous games. So you don't have to play archipelago like this with everybody sitting and playing all at the same time you can log on and off and play not at the same time and each game will get its checks the next time you, you log on. So an async is a game where people aren't actually playing together at the same time. Which, Which uh, if, if you can imagine, means that people will not be getting their items fully for days on end. Right, which and, can and as... To... As we've gotten into bigger and bigger asynchronous games, you get stuck more and more often. Um, the previous async we had was... Uh, it was a thousand worlds between the various games. Yeah, don't know how many... I don't have a count of the players, but a thousand different quote-unquote games, which is just instances of the games. Worlds. Yeah. And the one that is currently running, I believe, is at 1200. Is that right? Yep. 1200 some of them were made by people and some other ones were just they also just sometimes make extra worlds just in case people want to take them later which in this in this one in particular has worked out very well they've all been being taken in mass very hype and huge but as aforementioned bk becomes a far more substantial issue when you get into stuff like that where you're not expected to play every day. <laughs> and AP has accounted for that. Hop up, I think, yeah. Hop up, definitely accelerating. Oh my god, wait. <laughs> That's a little funky generation, I think. That is that is a forest <laughs> is a forest entrance to land of darkness. That is not the most uncommon, I guess. It's not super inconsistent with the rules of generation, but it is still a little bit weird to see, especially given that that's the boss room that is acting as the transition. <laughs> I would, in a, in a more perfect world, it would have been a way stupider generation that we would have called out. Sometimes it gets really weird. Overcooked 2, you can see the, uh, the remote control platform there. Uh, the game itself has a lot of very interesting kind of gimmicks on the various levels to keep things interesting. So, always fun to see what the next level is messing with.
and cop up just full cleared forest. I wonder what the plan is. There's two things I can think he's about to do. <laughs> Okay, he's gonna go find the Maya. I was one part of me was wondering if maybe he was just gonna take a quick dip into the Land of Darkness, which is the hardest area in Rogue Legacy. And I think even at this level, he would probably still struggle a little bit. Not like terribly, but he would probably die in like 10 rooms, something like that. Depending on the luck. Uh, meanwhile, Mav has started Welcome to the Jungle, has opted to avoid Shatter the Sky. This is their last mission, then? This is the second to last. So he is last. going. To, so this mission, he is going to collect a number of these Terrazine belt, uh, vents. And once he collects, I think it's seven, isn't it? Seven. Um... Once he collects right. seven, that will complete the mission. Received <laughs> confirmation of seven. <laughs> also, um, now that I, also now that I know that you don't have the text client open, I feel like I could more. I should communicate more the items that are sent out. For example, Maeve just received Hell's Angels or Hell's Angel singular. I don't um, know if that's Hell's Angel is a mercenary. So, um, the way the campaign works, there are the standard units, but there are also mercenaries that you can hire that are kind of elite versions of the units. So, Hell's Angel is one of the standard units, but is stronger. I like that approach to that fight pop up. <laughs> Surprisingly cheap spell, given the class you are. Oh! And another value of the runes coming in. That fairy chest would not have been gettable without that. Although, it didn't... I don't... Unless the tracker's bugging out a little bit, it didn't send out an item. So, Pop-Up, I think, is out of fairy chests to look for. Just kind of do them for fun. They still supply their normal amount of gold, but they're not going to be sending items anymore. Yeah, it was set to 8. The actual specifics is that it's it's set to 2 fairy chests per zone, but then it's set to universal, so you can get them from any zone. It's a little weird, quirky settings that the game has. So while we have a little bit of downtime here, I would like to talk about one of our new incentives that has opened up as of the beginning of this run. Ooh. So the upcoming Fez game tomorrow uh, has an option for them to play as Sonic, which is very fitting considering Bad. much like all of our runners. <laughs> yep. Uh, the whole point is to go fast. That is very good. It's it, it seems like you almost have to donate money at that point. To make sure that that happens. So that one very is good. only a one hundred dollar milestone to be met. I believe this that this community is capable. Just think of. Think of Parker. Think Oops. of Parker. Think of Parker. True. <laughs> well, we I are, think... what is that, just under uh, $750 away from pop our up. total goal for the donation marathon here. Mm -hmm. Hop up rerouting. I think uh, hopping around to make sure I see that. <laughs> that hop up just reruined. Now, instead of having dash, they're just moving really, really fast. 
Which, again, good for exploration, which is good for getting items. And also, the deaths are still doing well, because... The deaths are allowing him to get the diary entries. Which is good, because diaries are also checks. There's technically a, there's a setting to get rid of the diary incrementing when you die. But Hop Up has chosen to keep that setting off. So Hop Up is getting a new diary every time they die. Which is a good excuse for bad gameplay. <laughs> In my opinion. I feel like a lot of people have gotten it. There are still items to look out for for the games. We are reaching a pretty critical point where people have like most of the items that they need to, to finish. Although I imagine not all, and it's just a matter of doing it. Well, um, if, you, if you take a look at how uh, the last level of Overcooked 2 went, um, that was 6-4. It was one of the horde levels, and it was it was clearly doable. They got through it, but uh, it, was, it was looking a little spicy there at the end. So uh, there are items that could help out for Overcooked 2, but it sounds, it seems to me that this is potentially completable. So we will see what happens. Yeah. The, the pace is looking pretty good. In my well, what happens, uh, overview analysis. What happens to an, an archipelago world if they finish it before they physically checked all of their locations in it? So, for most archipelago games, you can technically turn this off, but in most cases, if a player finishes the multi their multi-world game, they will be able to... Hang on, brain. They'll be able to do something called releasing and collecting. Releasing is just all of the items that are still in the world after you beat the game. They will all be sent out to every everyone else. And collect is that all of the checks in other people's worlds that have items for that player will be sent out. So the so these are what allowed here and might be able to be useful for this case when people finish however i do believe that they are they might be roughly trying to coordinate to finish at about the same time i could be wrong about that it was definitely brought up at some point in pre-talk but i don't know if in the current situation they're able to control that um, there is a setting specifically for races, um, such that when you complete the game, the game is just completed and you can't go back and do more checks. Um, mm -hmm. That is to ensure that um, teams are communicating and make sure, making sure they have everything rather than just racing towards the end and calling it a day. Um, that is primarily for races, though, and um, doesn't see yeah. a lot of use. Yeah, here, once they finish, they're going to have that have that release and collect happen. Uh, just so that all the... Come through. I won't be releasing. We won't finish at the same time. Yeah. They would like to finish at about the same time. <laughs> Oh, and we would like to welcome our raiders from Bingo Thon. Welcome to Multithon. Uh, we are here at Multithon benefiting the Blue Path uh, Service Dogs Charity. So we are a four day speedrunning event benefiting Blue Path Service Dogs. Our goal is to show off the best the speedrunning community has to offer in cooperation and collaboration. Through showcasing runs and games that feature connection with others, be that in the game or a friend to play it with. Our schedule is packed head-to-head -head with races, creative collaboration, and so much more. Typing exclamation point schedule in the chat. 
you can see all of the great things that we have coming up for you this week. Yep, we're looking forward to all of that. As uh, Hop Hop still, I feel like still trying to find the Maya right now. I think it's slow down a little bit. Although I'm just still getting sent out. Nice and good. I do wonder when, when the fun boss rush is gonna happen. I'm excited for it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I Death Defiance is just Sorry, got. That's fine. Death Defiance just got sent, which is another pretty good, another good item to get. That's kind of. Kind of once off. It doesn't sound. It doesn't feel that significant in the grand scheme of things, but it's quite good. The death defiance basically just means when you die, your first time in the thing, the game will just say, "You know what? Have another chance," and you will respawn with, I think, I don't know the percentage of health, but with a reduced amount of health. Hop up, giving the hop up, giving the go ahead for. The final mission. This is the coordination we were talking about. Yep, so um, Map is now going to start the final mission. Um, Hop Hop does have to find the last boss rings. And I believe that Overcooked 2 is in go mode once they are finished with what they're doing now. Yeah. I've not been paying attention too much, but I believe for the past couple runs, Hop Hop has been using release and collect not on automatic. Okay. Ooh, and the blacksmith has finally been sent out. The item that was hinted for very early on has finally been sent. Because really gross location. And that probably means Hop Hop's pretty ready to go. Yep, go mode. Ready to go. More little terminology for Archipelago. Go mode meaning obviously ready to go. You can go right to the finish. And yeah, I believe Hop Hop for the past couple of runs has been using Architect so that they know what the rooms are and we'll be able to go quickly. Oh, just picked up the Hedgehog's, Hedgehog's curse. curse. You don't love to, you don't love to see that. That is, whenever he takes damage, he's now going to drop coins. Like Sonic. And it just decides to get up. Oh that. no, he's ready to go. <laughs> Tactical retire. We'll see. Okay, so it looks like he's going to set himself up with the blacksmith, find all the boss rooms, and then get ready to go once uh, yeah. Mav is closer to finishing his mm-hmm. mission. As you can see, uh, the blacksmith, very, very substantial potential stat ups here. Which I believe will also increase his level. I'm pretty sure. I actually can't remember if that increases level. I'm like reasonably confident it does. And either, either way, he's going to be very strong. De- I believe at this point, definitely able to just beat all of the bosses. Okay, I was wrong about the levels thing, but still. Uh, for strong. Mav's final mission, uh, he's going to go through this initial cinematic segment, and then we are going to be following around the four. Odin. Odin, sorry. Thor is the, the not amazing one. <laughs> um, Odin's going to run around and explode a whole bunch of stuff. I believe Mav's goal is to uh, destroy most of the production for the enemy in this initial push, and that makes the rest of the game... Not busy. production, air units. Air units. Air units, that's what it is. Leopard Carnival. <laughs> Dude. It's like kind of a shame to keep finding these carnivals, but on the other hand, it would be very annoying if they were useful. Because <laughs> that would mean if you didn't find them, it would be a problem. 
<laughs> yeah, hop up still just exploring pretty much. Looking for them boss rooms. Not a lot of the Maya so far. Kind of surprising that they haven't found the Maya boss yet. First, ooh, first Maya chest is Hellion. From Maeve. Again, not well informed on that. If that's a... Actually, I feel like I've heard of Hellion. Isn't Hellion, like, not that good? <laughs> Uh, Hellion is a, uh, a ground unit. It, it's pretty quick, and it does really good against large groups of enemies, but as a general rule, there's better stuff. Yeah, Maeve, Maeve has their input. Not going to use it. One of the worst units. Okay, I was right. <laughs> fair, fair enough. How is Hop Hop not found this yet? Oh my. <laughs> there it is. Boss just found. Just as they get progressive liches, which unfortunately I don't think they're going to use it all for the boss rush because that's really only good for exploring. <laughs> because the lich gimmick is that you start with a low amount of health, but every kill you get, you get more health. So when you're just bossing and not really fighting things, it's not that good. <laughs> that's all right. Hop up doing a very this is a very cheeky fight. I this is funny. <laughs> Getting it done. A hop up just sent progressive dash to toaster. What? Yeah, so that that um, second dash will remove the cooldown so that it is consistent with vanilla gameplay. Is there not a cooldown in vanilla? I don't believe there is. There is not. So the in order to add progression items to Overcooked 2, Toaster has taken away a lot of the abilities from the original chefs in game and added them as items. So like Calmer Unbread, which keeps the zombie loaves from the horde waves. Uh, from being quite as aggressive, progressive dash, progressive throw catch, which turns your base abilities to throw and catch into just throwing and then catching on top of that, <laughs> uh, as well as dashing. Uh, so it's quite a challenge, especially starting uh, starting off in a very early part of the Overcooked side because you don't really have very much at all compared to what you would have in the original game. Um, oh, and that is my mistake. Apparently, this is, is. the first progressive dash. So there will still be a cooldown. That sounds terrible. <laughs> you, given my vague understanding of how the game works, that does not sound good at all. <laughs> Overcooked 2, one of the newest Randovania, or Metroidvanias. Shout out. <laughs> I, lo I love just calling all, all games Metroidvanias very funny thing to do more doesn't seem like hop up i think trying to find more gold also to get more blacksmith upgrades but uh only so much to come by that doesn't make sense a lot of them have been sent out already there's probably still a few more in the pool though and i believe yeah i believe hop ups going to look for the Land of Darkness boss now. And once that happens, I think we're going to get to the fun. <laughs> so in Overcooked, you can see the walk wheels that we picked up a while back doing work as they push those walks around to follow the fire. Is this fun or fun? 
Well, uh, not having dash for the entirety of the game in Overcooked, I would not. I, I would definitely put the quotes on that. It's aggressively subpar. You can <laughs> understanding how the game works. I don't know how strong the dash is, but the thought of a time-based thing where you're missing a fundamental movement item is not excellent. Yeah, <laughs> about see. as bad as you would expect. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, hop up, hop up, still money hungry here. Going for the fairy chest. Oh yeah, and stats. I keep I forget that the fairy chests have stats in them too. Which I suppose is pretty nice. Can't stop getting hit by those balls. <laughs> yeah, the uh, the darkness is a challenging set of levels. This area is painful. Oh, you found the boss room, which, what I imagine, I don't know what the plan is from here. I imagine it's still going to be collecting gold for a little bit before the next death. But I'm thinking the next death is... The next one is the run. <laughs> yeah, it does look like um, Overcooked 2 has started one more level prior to their 6-6. Six, six. So two levels away from finishing? I anticipate that. that will be Another fairy chest that is accessible. I guess that's what happens when you have runes. A lot of the fairy chests become accessible. And crit. Just current, just currently, all players just kind of playing the game at the moment. <laughs> mm -hmm. Not really very much to talk about, if anything. Hop hop gold farming currently. Oh, this looks tough. Oop. It's good. So it looks like Mav has cleaned up that that upper base is the primary air base. Um, I believe the one he's moving into now is primarily factory units. I could be wrong about that. It's been a while since I played this level. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there's a third base over to the east of the map that we will have to take care of as well. Oh. Hop, hop. Not doing so hot in this room. <laughs> room big rooms like that are such a mess, to be fair. Oh. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff to dodge in this area. Yeah, this is why it's good that Hop Hop just got all the bosses figured out, out of the way and has Architect. Because otherwise, if they didn't have Architect at this point, it would mean that they would just have to find the bosses. Which would be bad, because obviously death happens in, uh, in rooms. So I believe, if I'm not wrong... The fun is about to start. I mentioned before another thing to do with the incentive, which I believe is about to happen right now. Hop Hop is currently confirming that it's time to go. As I'm pretty sure it'll be quite quick for Hop Hop once, uh, once he's ready to go. <laughs> Relatively, like for some reason, I was thinking it was gonna take way, way longer than I'm thinking it will, it's just because architect. <laughs> I'll pop going to get the another armor piece, I believe. Yep. Or at least look at them. <laughs> Not a lot of good ones at the low amount of gold that Hop Hop has at the moment. 
a little bit tricky. Figuring it out. Bought the cheap cheapest cape they have. Hmm. So as we start to move towards the final pieces of this run, I would like to take a moment to remind everybody why we are here, and we are here for Blue Path Service Dogs. The uh, donations from this event will all go to feature Blue Path, uh, and they provide autism service dogs offering safety, companionship, and opportunities for independence to these families. Blue Path's expertly trained autism service dogs are provided free of charge. They improve safety and provide families with the freedom to unlock life's potential. In Blue Path's Pause to Learn program, dogs spend time providing therapeutic support in schools, camps, residential homes, and day habilitation settings. Future service dogs and program participants learn together, with the dogs obtaining important training experience and individuals receiving invaluable benefits pause to learn impacts over 2,000 individuals annually for more information on blue path service dogs and to see all important dog pictures please visit bluepathservicedogs.org this is a this is a very a very good service they're doing here and i believe i've done a few events before in the past and I believe this might this might be the first time I'm doing one that is in support of aut of autism support. And as someone who personally actually does have high functioning high functioning autism, it is it's very nice to see that these services are still getting the support that they need. But well, how much money are we at right now? Twenty two hundred, two thousand two hundred sixty three. And 22 cents it's a lovely thing we're doing here yeah it's pretty big um more than 3.5 million americans live with an autism spectrum disorder it's currently the fastest growing developmental disability in the united states with a dramatic increase in diagnosis ranging from 2000 um to today uh originally it was uh, one in 44 and now is up to one in 150 individuals or up from one in 150 individual individuals to one in 44. So, and especially in the yeah. uh, in childhood homes, uh, many children with autism exhibit bold tendencies, which can make trips outside the home a frightening proposition. Um, bolting is just when the individual has the sudden urge to run. So the autism service dogs work mm. alongside the parents and caregivers to help keep these children safe. Uh, the dogs are connected to the child via a very specially designed tether system. The dog is trained to anchor in response to a child bolting. So this immediate emotionless reaction helps keep the child safe, often reduces or eliminates the bolting behavior entirely. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Also, just shout outs to uh, the organizers for this event. Uh, I know it's the first time Multicon has been run, but it has done a really good job of keeping things organized. Which I will, organized. which I will say about that. I've ran. I've again. I've participated in events before. I've, I've seen events that have been going for like a while, that are one way less professionally than this one is, and I kind of really appreciate that. This is a very good marathon, especially for the first one. And doing great things over here. Hop up. I can tell. I can tell is just waiting for the call, the call to action to do the silly. <laughs> uh, it looks like Maeve uh, is uh, cleaning up as well. So it should be looking at a final push here in the future. 
Yeah, which, I mean, as I, even with the delay, we are very, very ahead of pace, I'm pretty sure, which we kind of expected to happen. I'm being honest. Okay, Hop Hop is... Hop Hop's changing plans, actually. So because it's taking a while to get to the point where he does the silly, as it were, uh, he's turning off the architect thing, gonna refine the rooms just so that he uh, can get more gold to upgrade himself just while he's waiting on the uh, final push to, once again, do the silly. <laughs> I don't, he got a very weird set of traits for this run. I don't remember which trait it is, but one of them makes him really small, which is uh, actually dwarfism. required for some fairy chests. What was it? It's, it's called dwarfism. Yeah. Dwarfism. That that makes a lot of sense. I probably could have guessed that, but if that one and also farce, this one. I believe this one's far sighted. Which makes it so it's just blurry in his in their direct view. Thank you for that hop up. Oh, and it looks like Map has completed the final mission there. Map has completed. A solid venture, I believe. I don't know what they plan to do specifically with this. In terms of whether or not the items are going to get released or not. I believe, based on what Map has just said, guess I'll get more items. I think they're just going to keep playing. That's reasonable. Not really much of a reason to at the moment. Everyone kind of has everything they need. Kind of curious and... where Map is going to go next. Um has expressed a um, dislike for the Outlaws mission in general, stating that it was too easy. Mm -hmm. okay. So they're just, so just doing a very easy mission, just to just to be something to do. Up, up, still in the prowl. I didn't actually see if they found the the castle boss, but even if they haven't, they could just. It's probably not that hard to find in the actual rush. Uh, and that is the forest boss found. That was pretty quick, all things considered. Still got a couple items to receive, and they're going to be sent. And it lo does look like maybe some facts playing the outlaws. As Maeve, Maeve put in the text client, it's a fun mission to do with the overpowered units, which, which sounds reasonable. And it looks like uh, Toaster's going into their final level. This one's pretty fun. Yeah, Toaster's also getting there, which means Pop Pop probably needs to pick up the pace a little bit, given that they just reset Architect, so they don't know where the bosses are anymore. <laughs> just making the move. I think not really bothering at this point to get items for the game, because while there might still be good stuff there, none of it's needed. So Overcook's final level is fun because uh, in addition to requiring 60 stars to unlock, the order of the orders uh, is guaranteed. So they know exactly which items are going to be requested. So it's not random like the rest of the orders in the game are. And they can accurately plan uh, to get them out. And they're not as concerned with the tip bonus either. 
uh, mm -hmm. as they can serve items out of order without suffering any penalties. That seems like it's going to make it pretty quick venture. So, so again, Hop Hop really does need to push now. <laughs> I believe Hop Hop is struggling to find the Land of Darkness pretty bad. It actually looks like quite a weird if it is where I think it is. Actually, it's not that weird. It's just not where Hop Hop looked, which is just a bit unfortunate. We'll keep looking for it. Found another jukebox. That's fun. Still getting a lot of gold. It was quite a good supply of gold, which is after mentioned, that is why Pop Pop reset the thing so that they'd be able to go. Go find more chests, get more Munzo so we can get better armor. Just in case, you know. Because what what he's about to do with the bosses could could ask for it. Again, I'm still I am still going to withhold that information. And once again, you will see it when it shows up. It'll be very obvious. Do not worry about that. Yeah, still, still looking for it. There it is. I believe, I believe that's all the bosses he's found except for Maya, unless he already did that and I just missed it, which could be the case. I do not know. Oh, he doesn't even have Hampson yet, the Hampson boss. Still should be good. Um, interesting, and only enough, uh, Mav has only so far built uh, Ravens, which was the <laughs> starting unit. As Hop Hop, Hop Hop has found the Castle Hampson boss and another carnival. I'm, I'm just <laughs> salty. That's all it is. I'm just salty <laughs> about all the carnival gets. Because <laughs> I feel like I struggle to find <laughs> Or maybe I'm just salty because I struggle to both struggle to find them and struggle to do them. I'm not very good at this game. <laughs> Sounds like a desire sensor at play. Mm-hmm. Pop up continuing to get gonna go for this fairy chest. A very convenient spell for it. <laughs> As it seems, got a bit more of a HP up. Damage tanking now. He knows Ken. <laughs> it's all good. Just gotta find the boss in this one area, and then I imagine either he's gonna keep getting gold or he's gonna retire and start the plan. We'll have to see though. Still a couple chests to get that are not hard to access. There's a man up and calmer umbred. Which I suppose doesn't matter that much at this point, but <laughs> definitely would have been useful in a couple of levels we've seen so far. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, to receive it now is meh. Alright. Pop pop at a dead end. 8,000 gold. This has been quite a good gold run. I guess that's what happens when you navigate the entire castle in one run. And found the health pot. Or not the health pot. Fountain? I guess it's a fountain. I do not actually know exactly.
I have never seen that room. <laughs> what the heck? Looks like a that, lot of fire. That looked ridiculous, yeah. And also another bad dead end. This uh, Maya's not treating him kindly. Uh, I believe we are closing in on the end for uh, Toaster Party. I believe mm -hmm. time ends when the final pancake has been delivered. Well, that's not time because... Well, yeah, time for that game. We still need to keep going because Hop Up also needs to finish before the goal is completed. Right. We will mark that that happens. Dude. How? <laughs> Pop up. Where is the... <laughs> bad luck. There it is. Hey, we found it. Found the boss room. Now all the boss locations are known. And if he just uses Architect, he will then be able to just go to all these things. Yep, he's retiring. All right, y'all. It's. T I think it's time for the silly. Let's see. It's going to be, yep, randomizing. He's looking for a particular trait here. So what's probably going to happen is that they're going to... Spend this gold and then just keep just keep going in re-rolling and trying to get the particular trait. Which at this point I guess I can talk about a little bit. So there is a trait in Rogue Legacy called Vertigo. And we've seen a lot of different traits, like the one that made the game all retro, made there were some that made the uh, the screen a little bit blurry in parts. Vertigo is by far the worst of them all. And in just a moment, if we're lucky, we will see just how that is the case. Mm, still hasn't seen it yet. Got glaucoma, which is another not very good uh, thing. Now Hop Hop has just zero, zero gold, so it doesn't actually matter. Uh, then he needs to spend gold. I actually didn't know that the architect accepted zero gold. I I don't really use architect that much. It's only useful for like this exact purpose. Still struggling. It, there is a universe where Hop Hop just doesn't get Vertigo for like 20 minutes. And we miss the deadline for the gift for the run. That would be very unfortunate if that happened. Hopefully it doesn't happen. I suspect if we got close to that, we would probably just, you know, do the just, have him, just have him play without the, without the thing. Not much we could do about it. Oh, we've still got some time. Hop Pop has expressed their, their opinion. They're going to do five rolls. And then they're just... Oh! And it's a... Ooh. <laughs> there we go. This, uh, this could be interesting. <laughs> so this is a dragon character. The one that flies really good. And also I think has uh, something to do with magic. I don't remember. That's honestly not important. What is important is what we're about to see in just a moment. I believe Hop Hop's just taking one last look at the sh manor. And now we start bossing. <laughs> so the effect of Vertigo, as you can see, is that the game is just completely upside down. <laughs> Which, to everyone who plays the game, is terrible. And I think it's obviously terrible for obvious reasons. <laughs> but because we hit the incentive, again, thank you all so much for your generosity to get us this, to this point. He's going to play the game upside down, fighting each of the bosses, starting with Keter in Castle Hampson, first boss. He's not going to have a bad time, especially with this strat, the fight's basically the same. <laughs> And so that's and that's going well. 
it's worth noting that the game was set up so that the bosses would not have important items so that we could do that. And that is a functionality that Archipelago has, which is very nice. The one yeah. boss down. So in the settings, you can you can limit any of the uh, items or locations, kind of however you want. There's a lot of customization you can do. Now we enter the next boss fight. Boss rushing. This is Alexander of Forest. A little bit harder than the first boss. Although, a fortunate thing is that it doesn't change too much, mainly because the boss is flying. Which makes it a little bit more tolerable, but as you will see, that's not always going to be the case. <laughs> and there he goes. Another easy boss. Really easy when you're this loaded in the game. Just kind of has to go through the motions currently. That's two. To the Maya next. Or, or wait. Oh, right. The map is upside down. I got genuinely confused for a second. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's funny. Here's Ponce de Leon of the Maya. Third boss. Another floaty guy. Still harder than all the others. Dragon's actually proving to be very effective against these bosses. Pretty good roll, overall. Oop. A little bit of damage. Oh god. Oop. Getting a little trick. Getting a little tricky, but he has it, I think. Oh god. Don't die. Oh. You How much health is that? <laughs> Come on. Is that one? That was so close. Are you kidding me? <laughs> All right. Look at that. <laughs> I, I think it was four. I think it's he four. Had four health. Pop up has confirmed four. That is insane. <laughs> it felt like a little bit of a throw. It didn't have to happen, but it was funny nonetheless. <laughs> and he found. <laughs> and right now, Hop Up finds Shinobis, which I find very funny. Because Hop Up does not like Shinobis. So it's good that they're not in that. Oh, hey, we just got a Berserker in the chat. Oh, yes. hello, Berserker. Yeah, so uh, Berserker is the one who initially developed the archipelago system. Initial developer, still currently hosting the, the website and all of the stuff to have that running. We all really appreciate the work that he does. I think, yeah, Hop Up's currently trying to heal. I <laughs> that's the plan. <laughs> going through all the teleporters that he could find, and now he's going. One more boss to go in the main area. Probably, not probably, the hardest boss. One more, actually. Oops. Wait a second. One more boss in the overworld. Definitely the hardest one, both in general and for and for this specifically, because now gravity matters. <laughs> this is gonna be awful. Because <laughs> now that this this fight's gonna take significantly longer than the others, so we could talk about it real quick. Herodotus, slime guy, every time you kill a part, splits into two and also spawns one of the one of the green wizards which will spawn stone usually below you but in this case above you because vertigo and so hop hop's gonna have a lot of work to do a lot of dodging <laughs> especially once there's a lot of small ones on the field it's gonna be a mess Fortunately, Mave still sending out items for him <laughs> crit chance up could be useful. Oh god. Oh! <laughs> yeah, 
handling so, uh, it pretty well. So Mab is uh, shown off a little bit. Uh, he just uh, hopped into Outbreak and cleared two bonus objectives before they spawn by killing them when they were invisible. Yeah, Mave still still playing their game. I assume is Toaster also still playing? Yes, they yes. are. Still got still they got stuff to do. At this point, just thing. sending items, trying to find items for Hop Hop. See if they can help him out just a little bit. <laughs> While Hop Hop struggling. The health not very good, and there's still so much rot of this left to fight. Oh dear. Uh one hit. Oh. It is a difficult boss. For it's an you. unfortunate boss. It's it's kind of difficult when you're not upside down. <laughs> so being upside down makes it a little bit worse. Now, I don't actually remember Hop Hop's... I don't actually know Hop Hop's exact plan with when he dies, because that means he needs to find another Vertigo character. There might be a point where Hop Hop just stops upgrading his, upgrading his armor currently. Making himself even tougher. And also, I believe, Barbarian class, so he's going to have very good tanking ability here. He almost quit. <laughs> uh, pretend no one saw that hover over the quit Rogue Legacy button. That would, uh... That would have been very silly. Let's see. Can he find a Vertigo in reasonable time? I would love to see it. For the sake of both the incentive and for content. Retiring once again, because not Vertigo. Randomized children, very good here for... Uh, Making sure that he gets it. Still not getting it, though. But unfortunately, they can't just turn it on. But, you know, it is, it is what it is. I'm thinking Hop Hop's probably going to go through one or two more attempts to find it. Yep, going to find another... Hop Hop has just given input. This is the last check. Oh, hey! And it's a Shinobi. <laughs> That's. <laughs> I believe. I believe Shinobi is the is the low stats, high crit one. No, no, uh, high damage. Ah, it's else. the other one. Okay. High damage. Which I. Goes well. I. It kind of doesn't matter because the one thing I do know is that Hop Hop hates both of them. <laughs> So having to use them for Herodotus, which I don't even think benefits from the increased damage, because I feel like Hop Hop's at the point where he one shots the slimes. Could be tough for him. We will find out though. Go in there. Good luck. I hope this is the one, because if it's not, I believe Hop Hop's going to stop trying to get Vertigo. Prayers in chat for our boy. Good, good ability. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Hop Hop just said, screw it. It's time. <laughs> oh, and he got, he got Naves. Which I believe... Is Naves Naves is the one I'm talk I was talking about, right? Naves is crits. Yes. Okay. Got both of the classes he doesn't like. Right at the end. Which is a bit silly. Harada is taken down with ease. All four overworld bosses slaughtered. And now the door opens and the final and the final boss comes through. Which I guess we could talk. There isn't too much story doing Rogue Legacy, but
But the whole premise of the game is that every time you die, it's your progenitor that, uh, it's, it's your next generation that does the next run. And that will be important information for the final boss, which currently Hop Hop is just looking for health and mana to make sure that they're fully equipped to fight you to fight them. Trying to find it. <laughs> What does that what does that read? Hang on. <laughs> did you Did you remember your silver arrows? <laughs> I believe that is a Zelda thing. Yes. A nice silly little thing to say. The end of the game. Just navigating the thing. This looks annoying to navigate. Oh. <laughs> Y'all can read that, right? Yeah, I'm sure everyone here has learned to read upside down. Final boss time. Going in. The father of the first generation of the game that you started with, Johannes. We fight upside down. Looking very easy, actually. He has a lot of damage. <laughs> the class now really coming to, coming to fruition with this one. And that's the first boss killed. But there's a second phase. And the time ends... When the boss dies. So we're almost there. Get in there. Time. <laughs> that is both bosses defeated. That is the multi-world randomizer. Rogue Legacy. Overcooked 2. Starcraft 2. GG's. To Hop Hop, Maeve, and Toaster. We're going crazy in this run. Getting it under the time in spite of... Some silly generation and also some tech issues. Shout out to the Marathon. As I said before, very professional. Love it here. Good cause. Very good. Shout out to Archipelago. A very good... A very good software and functionality to let us have this be possible. To play three different games together. In a, in a format like this. And uh, if you're if you're watching the uh, the feed here, you can see what happens at the end of an Archipelago run. Traditionally, um, everyone releases all of their items, and there's a whole spam of all of the uncollected stuff that gets thrown in there. Here to demonstrate. <laughs> Um, also, I believe Maeve did, but they only had one item left. Yeah, a bit unfortunate. Actually, wait. I have control here. I can. I can. I can make Hop Hop do it. Wait. Um, also, yes. I just noticed this, but I, I I believe that Toaster Party has been floating around uh -oh. since they finished. <laughs> yeah, oh, you did. Toaster, uh... Hell or see that. flipped through the map and went out of bounds and is now, I believe, falling. Oh. I me I messed that up a little bit. Rogue Legacy has an in-game button to do it. <laughs> there we go.
And that is the Archipelago Randomizer. If you're interested and you want to take a look at it, you can always go to archipelago.gg. Um, plenty of instructions. There's a whole list of all of the games that Archipelago supports at the moment. And you can yeah, full, list of, well. full list of games. A great Discord community that I appreciate very much. And just a, just a whole lot of fun times. Yes, sir. <laughs> and I believe with that, that should be all. Again, thank you. Thank you, the runners. Thank you, Multithon. Thank you, Berserker, if you're still in chat. For your work on Archipelago. And yeah. That's it for us. Mm -hmm. all Next. right folks so that was our archipelago multi-world increased difficulty run by development pop up and coaster party so well done to all three of our runners for the amazing showcase of teamwork and camaraderie on that one so next up after this, we have, in case you couldn't get enough overcooked action, we have a full overcooked to any percent coming up done by Ruby Heart, Peace Egg, and Sunbro Jade. So we'll have some three player shenanigans coming from them. Just an update on some of our remaining pieces here uh, the overcooked run still has some time. We can upgrade to pet the dog. Kevin has been a very good boy, especially in Toaster's segment of the Archipelago. So we want to make sure that we give him some love. And Lego Hobbit. We can do some cutscene watching with them. Currently at $5.01 of the $150 donation mark for them. And the newly opened donation mark at the beginning of this run. Fez to have the characters play as Sonic. So that one is a $100 in in donation incentive. Uh, so folks, we are going to take a quick step into the background here. And get things set up for Overcooked. So hang tight and we will get things moving. Everyone, we are here benefiting Blue Path Service Dogs at Multithon, where we are faster together. Uh, currently sitting at $2,263.22 of our donation goal for $3,000 for the event, so that we can name a puppy. We, too, could unleash the cuteness that is a Parker out into the world. So... Unfortunately, all good things must eventually come to an end. I have been so glad to have been here hosting for you for this stretch. It has been an absolute pleasure to be here to help out with Multithon. Uh, this will be my last hosting shift for this event. So thank you so much to everybody on the Multithon team for everything they have done to put this together. And of course, a special shout out to the tech team who in the background is constantly running around putting out fires with buckets as fast as they can. Also their own kind of speed running. So thank you folks. I'm going to step into the background. Next up on hosting duty, we will have Myrne and they will be doing an excellent job to take care of you. It has been my pleasure and take care. Hello, everyone. 
everybody. Everybody just give a huge round of applause to Reggie. Such an amazing host. Absolutely loved being able to watch this wonderful marathon with them, you know, just hosting and everything that they do. So thank you so much. My name is Mirne and I will be your host for the next few hours. Uh, just a quick thing. I want to remind everybody that this is multi thaws inaugural event. And we want to thank everybody for the overwhelming support from the community. We've been able to make it bigger and better than we ever dreamed. We want to thank everybody for watching and donating for allowing this event to take place and help to be able to make this an event, make this event a tradition that we can look forward to for years to come. Uh, we're going to go ahead and finish getting ready for our next run, which is Overcooked 2, and we'll be back in just a bit.